Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. The recon class in Battlefield 5 can be much more impactful than it often appears. Scouts can quickly spot a dozen or more enemies using the spotting flare and spotting scope. They can now damage and disable vehicles with the boys' AT rifle, and let's not forget the spawn beacon. Spawn beacons allow your squadmates to spawn at a particular location. They have a limited number of uses before they expire, emit a telltale radio static sound audible up to 20 meters away, and can be destroyed with small arms fire. There's a delicate balance to placing spawn beacons in Battlefield 5. You have to find a location where it's unlikely to be discovered, but close enough to an objective to be useful. Remember that enemies generally move from objective to objective, so avoid these kinds of straight shots. Lately, I've found plenty of spawn beacons in Battlefield 5, but very few in locations that actually make some sense. So for this video, let's check out three great locations on each map to set up beacons in Conquest. If you're annoyed I'm telling people how to use this gadget properly, use this video as a guide on where to look for them. So, let's start with everyone's favorite map, Amada. There's no shortage of places you can squirrel away a spawn beacon here. However, there are a few locations that do stand out. Personally, I enjoy placing a beacon in the small bridge arches. They're just high enough to deploy a parachute if you jump, and they give you the option to attack either D or E from the front or the sides. If you're on the Allied team, placing a beacon at the northern edge of B is advisable. This particular spot allows you to spawn behind the AT gun location that overlooks the objective and is especially useful if your team is having some serious trouble holding those objectives. For the Axis, their side of the map is many ruins where you can place a beacon. I enjoy this location west of E because it's quite difficult to reach. Next, let's look at Rotterdam. This urban map is a couple sneaky places you can hide some spawn beacons. One of the craftiest is on top of the train cars. You can climb on top using fortifications or debris. Try to place your beacon in a location where it isn't easily visible. The only downside to placing a beacon at this location is that the gadget's sound can give away the position quite easily, largely due to the increased foot traffic on this elevated railway. If you want more out-of-the-way locations to help you capture objectives, the Allied faction should look no further than the boats near E, particularly the one with the open hold here. This lets you place a beacon where it isn't easily visible, while a prime hiding spot for the Axis is west of A in this corner apartment. On Fjell, some of your best bets are along the edge of the map. North of sea on some rocks is always a good location. It allows quick access to three objectives, and you spawn largely in cover. For access forces, placing a beacon south of B is also ideal. Few players venture this direction unless they intend to use the buildable AA gun. For a cheeky spawn beacon, the Allied faction can hide one under the house foundation at E. Again, keep to the edge of the map on Fjell. Narrow paths generally mean your beacon won't last long anywhere else. On Arras, you can stash spawn beacons in any number of locations. Among my favorites is the back of the church at E. This location is a little out of the way, and it gives you great routes to E, F, and D. Meanwhile, on F, you'll find a nice spot in the fields to the northeast. This location breaks the line of sight to the objective and is generally far enough away from the capture zone to go unnoticed. Lastly, hiding a spawn beacon in the hedgerows near A also gives you choices on which objective to attack. A, B, and E are all viable options here. For devastation, I'd recommend hiding a beacon near the vehicle resupply station northeast of B. Again, few players have cause to head this direction unless they're looking for ammo, and even then, there is a much more convenient ammo station on the way to C. Another great location is southeast of A. You'll have to find the right place to jump to get there, but many players don't explore this area of the map. From the Axis side, if you want to get under the enemy's skin, this location at E is perfect. It's almost impossible to see from the street, and it really makes it difficult for the Allied team to focus on the other objectives. 
On Aerodrome, the rocks to the south of D offer a good location to stash a spawn beacon. North of C, you'll find a small guard post. It's easy to hide a spawn beacon behind it, and it offers quick access to either F or B. If you want something else out of the way, hide one in the riverbed north of C. Players rarely take this route, preferring to funnel through C to the other objectives. For Panzer Storm, hiding beacons on top of buildings can often be your best bet. There are many buildings on objectives that can be climbed if you look for a creative way up. Placing your beacon on top of these buildings lets you get the literal drop on your enemies. On Objective D, I'd highly recommend putting your spawn beacon at the truck southwest, or behind one of the many damaged panzers to the east where its location can be obscured by smoke. Twisted Steel, meanwhile, also has some unique locations. One of my favorite places on any map to place a spawn beacon is inside of transport trucks. Many players ignore these vehicles as obstacles, instead of realizing their tactical value. A great location for a beacon is inside the truck to the west of G. Far south of C, you'll find a thicket that's a perfect place for a spawn beacon to keep your team in the fight for that objective. You can also place a spawn beacon on top of the shack at E. It's another place that doesn't see a lot of foot traffic, but is close to the objective. Next is Narvik. You can find a great location north of E along a ridge. This location is just out of bounds and obscured by trees. It's a great way to keep some pressure on some of the central objectives. Another worthwhile location is under the train trestle north of D. This position provides excellent cover and a quick route to the drain pipe leading to the other side of the objective for flanks. Similarly, the fishing boat at D is another great location, but a bit riskier. You can place a beacon here, but it does have a distinct lack of cover. Lastly, on Mercury, the edge of the map here is again your friend. The peninsula north of E is an ideal location for Axis soldiers, allowing you to use the wall as cover to avoid detection when moving on an objective. The far southern edge of the map works as well between C and D. Allied soldiers should also place a spawn beacon on the ridge south of B. That's it for this video on spawn beacons for Battlefield 5. Make sure to tell me in the comments which of these locations is your favorite or if you have a particular location of mine that you like to place a spawn beacon. I would love to hear that, so tell me down below in the video comments. If you found this video helpful, leave a like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell to get updates on all the latest Battlefield news. I'll be putting out a guide here soon for Marita once that map gets released as well. As always, thanks for watching.